Good morning. It is Saturday, September 25th of 2021. And today is the day to opt in to be watched by Tesla uh, as far as my telemetry, my driving uh, techniques, my driving safety. For them to decide if they'll give me access to the full self-driving beta. I have hardware 3. The car was upgraded to that uh, back when it was way more affordable to do it. This is a 2018 Tesla Model 3. And let's go in. The software update arrived today. So if I go to software, there it is. 2021.32.22. I had to wake up my car around 9 a.m. Eastern. Only then did it show up um, in the app. And I also updated the app to the latest version. So we'll have a look here and see what happens when I go to the autopilot settings. This is all new equipment. I'm on a brand new GoPro Hero 10. All right, let's go to autopilot. There it is, the request button. Request full self-driving beta. Let me clarify. Yes, there's controversy about the name there. No, I don't claim this is something where you don't need to pay attention. Tesla is abundantly clear about all of that. If you look at any of my library of test videos over the last year, year and a half or so, I usually only used driver assist technology on the highway for adaptive cruise control and sometimes semi-automatic lane changes where the car looks using the eight cameras around me to see if it's safe to change lanes and then executes the lane change. All right, thank you for your interest, it's saying. And once you accept the terms, it will analyze my driving. And from a safety score, you'll be eligible to receive the software update as part of limited early access. I consent to the ongoing VIN associated dri driving data while I'm enrolled. I understand I am responsible to remain alert, my hands on the wheel, and must be prepared to take action at any time. That has always been the case in every car I've driven for well past three decades. I well understand this. And I understand FTCD beta can be revoked at any time. Except. And that's it. It says I am enrolled in the full self-driving beta queue. So who knows where I am in the queue? Um, let's see. Traffic light and sign control. I think I'll turn that back on. So now I simply wait. We're not going to see any other new features here. Um, let's take a look if sound showed up here. If we go and play some audio, say off of USB. Immersive sound now has a slider and auto. So that is new for my Model 3. That didn't show on my previous release. So I'll try out auto and see how that goes. And uh, that's the change. All right, cool. Always nice to see anything that changes your car's features. Um, one thing I didn't show you was release notes. So let's go and show you release notes. Software. Release notes. And here comes the release notes. There we go. Request full self driving. That's all I claim. And then 32.10, which I did not have, is the immersive sound improvement. So we can tap on that and see it. There you go. We just covered that. Camera, ca cabin camera. I should point out that the cabin camera is now watching me. So under control, safety, and security data sharing, I have to give permission for that. I have to opt in for that. And then there's a bunch of features earlier. So let's go to control, safety and security, data sharing. Controls, safety and security. Data sharing at the very bottom. Do I agree for Tessa to try to improve through using this data? So you definitely have to opt in for this. So I have a feeling if you had this off, it wouldn't have let me finish the full cell driving application process. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of re-sign that. I've submitted that as well. So now that's it. This may rub you the wrong way. Uh, for me, I have no problem with it. Anything that's a driver assist feature that makes the odds of me getting from point A to point B uh, alive and healthy and safe is a good thing. I know people are horrible at driving or paying attention or keeping their hands on the wheel at all times and keeping their gaze ahead at the road. I know this is not a perfect technology. Most of the time I don't have sunglasses, so you should have no trouble seeing my eyeball position. This is stuff I've been thinking about since the mid-90s when I helped with some eye tracking research. So this is really cool. But again, I know some people will find that highly offensive. The data from your camera is said to not leave the car, by the way. It just flips some bits to decide if you're paying attention or if you're 
looking off to the side or looking at your phone or something. And that helps with the driver rating system. So as I set out here, I'm in the driving settings and I've turned acceleration to chill. That'll help prevent any kind of um, excessive acceleration, even momentarily for the next week or so. Not a big deal. Car still has plenty of power. Uh, that's probably about it for my advice there. I'm just gonna get in the road, uh, keep my eyes on the road, keep this closed and cover phone uh, from any temptation of it showing up. I'll probably even turn off the text messaging on screen. I just now have driving mode in iOS 15 anyway uh, to prevent all that. So it said that it favors using full self-driving whenever possible. So here we are in a wide open road it's not really a limited access highway, um, so normally I wouldn't really be using it around town like this. But again, I guess the more experience you have with autopilot and the more responsibility you show while using it, the better. And I'm keeping my eyes on the road and my hands on the wheel, paying attention at all times to what's going on around me, and not exceeding the speed limit by more than, say, five miles an hour would probably be a good idea as well. So you might want to adjust your cruise control setting in case you use some other offset that is greater than that. Now around town, the most the car will let you go about the speed limit is 5 anyway, generally, although with this software update, I'm not really sure. Okay, so I just engaged the right stock to proceed through this green, showing uh, attentiveness, very quickly reacting to the prompt to do that. That's because I turned on the beta feature for how to go through, or how to handle lights. Notice the blue pulsing is not happening on the screen at all, uh, because keeping some torque going on the wheel at all times. Now the speed limit's going to go up, so I'm just going to simply spin the right wheel on the steering wheel. So that's it. I'm a responsible, attentive, defensive driver, always looking at ways to reduce the chance of anything bad happening, including when people cut me off or pass me in the right. Never aggressive reacting to that. You'll see my speed limit went up. 55 is the speed limit now. I just it's reading those signs. And I'm actually getting off the next exit. We'll do a autopilot lane change. The car just handled that. There are numerous articles and tips about what Tesla might be looking for, but my guess and my hope is that a lot of it's about attention on the road. Does the wheel torque indicator show up? And do you have advanced collision avoidance set to at least medium? And is that thing beeping all the time at you? You know, if you come up fast, come in hot behind someone and have to hit the brakes pretty hard, that's not safe driving and I imagine you would uh, get dinged for that sort of behavior. So at the next stop, the next time my car is in park, I might actually take a moment to set my early collision warning beep thing from medium where it is now to high. Let's take this exit, navigate an autopilot, we'll automate this exit. Okay, I turn my wheel to the right, you'll see the blue steering wheel round indicator on my screen. It's bringing down the speed very nicely for a sharp turn all the way down to 35 and now it's me driving around the city you heard the little triple tone letting me know my turn to take over so I disengage with the stock get some lanes to cross here and this is city streets this software release is not city street beta okay my car is in park because I wanted to show you what I was talking about uh, now custom navigate okay so I'll probably leave it on by default. We'll keep it on mild changes. Exit passing lanes, yes. I require lane change confirmation. I don't always, uh, not always thrill how it goes. Okay, so for speed limit, we've got an offset of four miles an hour. So let's say we're five miles an hour above the speed limit. We're gonna get a chime at this absolute value. Ooh. Okay, so we want relative. So any more than five miles an hour over the posted speed limit in an area, a chime will now go off as I'm driving around town. Okay? And then on say cruise control, we get a fixed four miles an hour over the current over the speed limit for the cruise control. And forward collision warning, crank that up to early. So for about a week the car is gonna be a little extra a little extra naggy, I would say. I'm not gonna use Joe mode, I wanna hear the beeps. And uh, that's about it. I'll let it do its thing for departure lane avoidance and all that good stuff. Okay, hopefully this gives you some good tips. 
that you might find useful, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel for Tinker Try. I really appreciate that. You've got tinkertry.com slash EV videos and tinkertry.com slash EV articles to check out as well. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.